Hey guys, Gaming Off The Grid here. The Nintendo Wii is a liar. In today's episode, we are gonna expose some lies that were told on the back of the box of Nintendo Wii games that may have prevented it from being played by hardcore gamers. What are we drinking today? Today we're drinking Pineapple Guppy by Pipeworks Brewing Company. It's a pale ale brewed with pineapple from Chicago. All right, you know the drill. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon so you never miss an upload. And sit back, relax, pour yourself a beer if you care to, and let's talk about these little white lies by the Nintendo Wii. J Trip Show here, and you're watching Gaming Off the Grid. All right, hear us out. How many of you, when the Nintendo Wii came out, especially retro gamers, were like, I don't like the motion controls. You maybe tried it and that wasn't for you and you wanted the traditional controller. You maybe found out that there were some games that used the GameCube controller, but there were more. The Nintendo Wii did not always tell the truth on the back of the no, box. No, they didn't. So if you were like going to the store and you looked at the back and it's like, oh, you can only use the Wii remote, the nunchuck, and maybe the Pro Controller. Oh, you can't use GameCube. Not going to buy it. They lied. Yes, and absolutely. And we just found this out and it is frustrating. It was something we didn't even quite comprehend until recently we bought a game that we found another lie on the box and we'll talk about that in this episode. But we're going to go through some games that are kind of heavy hitters that we think would have been very important for Nintendo to disclose that you could use a GameCube controller on because a lot of retro gamers that weren't ready for motion controls would have maybe given yes. the system more of a chance. So start off right away with probably one of the biggest games that was ever released on the Wii. We're going to talk about Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Now there's a lot of you out there that might know that you can use a GameCube controller on it. But it doesn't say it on the back. It does not. You can use the Wii Mote, the Nunchuck, and the Classic Controller. It is not disclosed on the back of the box. So think about this. When the Wii came out, you're coming off of the GameCube Melee, which is obviously one, one of the, the best, best games. Smash. Yeah, best Smash games ever made for sure. And you see this and you're like, I, I want to use the GameCube controller. I can't. Not buying it, yeah, right? Not, you're gonna throw it away. I yeah. mean, most people that are really into Smash know that you can. I knew that I you could, and yeah. I never looked at the back. And you can even play with GameCube controller on the Switch version of the Smash. Yep. So that's that's awesome. But it does not say it on the back of the game, and I feel like you lost a ton of people by doing that. So freaking Nintendo, yeah, man, they're liars. This next one is sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. So there's a lot of people out there that think that the a Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition is the best version of the game. I would counter that with saying the GameCube version is the best. However, the uh, one on the uh, Wii actually truly might be the best if one knew that if you have your GameCube controller plugged in, you plug in the nunchuck like it says. See, this is tricky. Start the menu, but unplug the nunchuck and pick up the, the GameCube controller, boom, you're yeah. rolling. If it tells you as soon as you start, you gotta plug in the nunchuck and you're like, but I don't want none. Chuck, but you have to use it, and then you try going into options, you try switching the controllers, there's no options, and you're like, can't. Yeah. Frick, I can only use the Wii remote. No, if you just unplug the nunchuck, GameCube That's... works automatically, yep. and it's like, what the heck? Because it tells you, plug in the nunchuck. So this game is tricky, and it fooled a lot of people, but it didn't fool us. And the truth shall set you free! Now let's move on to the next liar. Yeah, so this game here is kind of a game we've talked about as being maybe a little bit of a hidden gem on the Nintendo Wii, and that's Sin and Punishment Star Successor. This is a really fun game if you were into shooters and like uh, rail, on-rail shooters, yeah. that type of thing. This is honestly one of my personal favorite Wii games, and I know it's, you like it's it a lot. Awesome. <clears throat> so anyway, back of the box says it's two-player, which it is. It's a great co-op game, and it says Wiimote and Nunchuck. Lies. Now this one is tricky because you got to go into options, switch the controller to game. GameCube and make the GameCube your priority controller, which is kind of weird. It's kind of confusing at first, but once you figure it out, it's like, okay, now I can play it. And it gives you it, the options to remap them. Yeah, right? so the buttons. Yeah. Yeah, you can go through and change all the buttons. So you can play it exactly how you want to play it on the best controller ever, the GameCube controller. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people, the version of this that we didn't get in the States on the N64 was a lot of people's like kind of uh, hidden gem shooter on the 64 and that was with the controller so you can step right into this one which this game is great if you guys haven't picked this game up this is one we would highly highly Yo, recommend it's, it's I'm, incredible I mean every game we're talking about in this episode is really good one so moving right along to a game that benefits I think greatly from using the GameCube controller any Sega fans Sega Saturn fans in particular might 
know a game called Knights into Dreams. Well, this game here, Knights Journey into Dreams, is the sequel made by Sega for the Nintendo Wii. A lot of people missed this one. And guess what? As you would probably suspect, you read the back of the box and it says Nunchuck, Wiimote, and Classic Controller. No GameCube. But you plug a GameCube controller in, you start the game, instantly you can use it. It works just fine. And it actually, it feels great because I love playing games with the GameCube controller. And if you've never played this game, it's really fun. It is a it's, beautiful it's a game, game, very artistic, um, and I think personally, I'm not completely crapping on the motion controls because there are plenty of games we've talked about on the channel and plenty of games that later on in life I like with the motion controls. But initially when the Wii came out, I didn't like it. I know JLove81 still does not like the motion controls. I think she hates the Wii because of it. Yeah, but and JLove, GameCube controls. Yes, and there's a lot of games you can get that are really good games. So anyways, Knight's Journey into Dreams is a great beneficiary of a GameCube controller and Nintendo lied about it. Not now, the one. next game I want to talk about does not involve the GameCube controller. No, but it's another lie. But it's another lie, and I don't know if Nintendo lied to us on purpose. It might have been a misprint. Okay, yeah. yeah, okay, you lied to us. We get it. But we mentioned this in our Wii Shooters game. This is Medal of Honor Heroes 2, and on the back of the box, it says one to four players. This is a single player game, unless you play online. Single player, not even arcade, there's not even camp. Nothing in this game is more than one player, so what the hell? It yeah. says one to four players. Yeah, the, the frustrating part is there is an arcade, like light gun version, which we talked about in the light gun yeah. games part two episode that we did. And so we were jacked up when we found out about that, and we're thinking, oh, it's it's four player, so it's easily got to be two player. No, it's a freaking liar. It's not. It's only one player. It says four players on the back of the box. So Nintendo must have had some big issues with communication across the distributors and uh, the, the developers that were making these games. And it makes you wonder, because there are plenty of games on our shelf that have a distinguished marking yeah, for the GameCube controller. They say the controller. GameCube on the back. Yeah. And I'm sure there's other games out there, but these are the games that we have on our shelf that we were like, dude, you can use these with the GameCube yeah. controller? This game's only one player? What the hell? And it kind of makes me, for some of these, like we were playing Smash a little bit before the filming of this, and we obviously got a little bit of screen cap of everything else, but it makes me want to go back and play a lot of these yeah. because I've only played them with motion controls. So. And the GameCube's the best. Now let's talk about something that's not going to piss me off and that's beer. Yeah, so this was good. given to us by a good friend of ours that we met in the early days of the channel. He's one of the original members of the Got G crew, and that is Dan Brosman out of Chicago, Chicago, right? That's where he's from, and so is this brew. You're the IPA guy, take it away, man. Yes, this is a pale ale brewed with pineapple. This is a fantastic summer beer. It's not too heavy, it's light, it's got really good flavor. It tastes like pineapple, man. This is a, this is a really good beer, and if you're a fan of pineapple, if you're a fan of pale ales, if you're a fan of IPAs, this isn't quite an IPA. It's not, there's not many hops, but as an IPA fan, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, I think this would be a great beer for someone who thinks they like IPAs or wants to kind of um, test get, their get palate, in, yeah. right? Um, this is the second beer we've done on the channel by Pipeworks Brewery. We did an, a, a unicorn. Ninja uh, versus Unicorn. Ninja and that versus was Unicorn. Awesome that was beer. another one that Dan hooked us up with. So um, right now, Dan Brosman's on a freaking heater. He keeps recommending Two good and beers. 2-0. Oh. and oh. This is a fantastic beer. Thank you so much, Dan. If you were in the Chicago area, you see anything from Pipeworks Brewery, they're 2-0 and o by our standards. And so far, the two cans I've seen from them are oh, yeah. freaking bad. The can, These cans are the so The can cool. art is unreal. So the Pineapple Guppy, two thumbs up from the God G guys. So absolutely uh, fantastic. Um, in the comment section below, let us know, are there any more games that you feel like the Nintendo Wii lied about with the controller configurations that you could use a GameCube controller on, but they didn't disclose that? Or, also, Or any other games where it's, it says it's four players and it's one player. I'm still freaking that, that's pissed. That's kind of a big I'm deal. I'm still freaking pissed about that. Anyways, um, another thing I'd like to note real quick before we wrap things up. It is Children's Cancer Awareness Month. And here at Gaming Off The Grid, we are raising money for Children's Cancer Awareness. All proceeds generated through our live streams and for merchandise sales yes. are going to be donated 100% to Children's Cancer Connection in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, we would love any and all support. We're really looking just to heighten awareness on this serious subject. So um, we always appreciate you tuning in and subscribing to the channel. Keep gaming, keep drinking. We'll see you next time right here on Gaming Off The Grid. Did we get it? I think we got it. Even though I didn't say Chicago, right? What'd you say? I said bye. From Chicago. <laughs> That's all right. I think we're good. I'm good. See, that's how it's done. That's a wrap.